Yes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't having any of that today. <laughs> Episode 17. At 17, yeah, blooming heck. Um, and this is a big one in uh, the Jetty Sounds career and for the local community at that time. Turnpike TV. Well, yeah. Uh, we made a, a compilation. It was designed for people to be broadcast. Maurice Bacon uh, supplied us half the footage. We just uh, did it and didn't know really why we were doing it. We were going in that direction. So you mentioned a name just then now, Morris Bacon. Yeah. Who was Morris Bacon? Oh, he was uh, based in London. I, I got to know him by Jerry Red, Medem. We got on famously. So you meet Morris Bacon at Medem. Yeah. And what is he representing at Medem? Well, he was doing his labels and his publishing. He was managing bands and he did something or all other. So was Morris Bacon at that time running his own show? Oh, yeah, yeah. But we were doing this. He just gave us the masses to it. Tell us about the working order of Turnpike TV. How many episodes were there due to be? Where are they getting? Where were they to be aired? Well, the Turnpike Cruisers cable TV show was the next step. Featured the Marino brothers, so it was Jim and Richard King. It featured the Turnpike Cruisers, Demented Arco, Alien Sex Fiend, and the Riverside Trio, uh, the Clyde, the uh, Croydon, Swindon, Coventry, and Aberdeen. They all were sent a, a, a tape. It reported well. It was good fun. It was a half hour show. It was done uh, into a proper standard, so, you know. So then, how does these six different locations then lead on to the MTV Europe deal? Uh, I can't. I don't know. I, I don't really remember. MTV Europe talking to the guys, uh, one of the top guys, Brian Diamond, and he liked the idea. <laughs> but MTV Europe only been going about 12 or 18 months. I think we finally um, decided it was July to December, and it will take six episodes of 30 minutes. Was it quite an exciting time then getting that MTV Europe deal? Oh, yeah. I think it was good. There was no one ever attempted this. They ring you and they want to know all the details of how it's going to do and how you're going to advertise in it. Yeah, yeah. When you watch it, you see the bits and pieces. Richard King and Jim and the Marino brothers, they did every part. Nick Fiend making an introduction. Olga going up the tower. She wasn't on the tower. <laughs> and um, Sylvia, who was my sister, who was making a robbery in a record shop. Stealing some of our videos and then she got arrested and uh, Steve Borsley in a variety of guises. Rich and Jim, when they were recording in Newcastle, they went out to a pub and they were dancing around and, you know, Jack Frost playing rats. Oh, God, um, Anson, our local hairdresser, was going down a jetty to arrest all these men who were smuggling Jet Sound videos and um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, the Turnpike Cruisers, the Red Arrows. Everything was in it. Uh, people in it like Robin Hitchcock, Way Out West, Guana Bats, Grum Suckers, Meteors, Toy Dolls, Cherry Bombs, Alien Sex Fiend, Hawkwind, Psychic TV, William Burroughs, The Nuclear Assault. We had everyone taking a part in a play. Manny Snitchelmore was played by Karen. And, you know, it was funny. Steve playing Dr. Rye. It was doing ridiculous things. That sounds like a lot of work. Oh, God, yeah. It was a lot of work. There were probably 20 people involved in it. Wow. It was hard work. Hard bloody work. A, a lot of that was done off the cuff, was it? Just inspiration hit and you'd follow an idea? Well, Mark Goodwin was... He moved from Paris to the St. Anne's for a couple of years, basically. He was the basic writer. He was a good at that. So whatever he kind of wrote and everyone kind of green-lighted, you then went about making yeah, it happen? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Was a lot of it done in your studio in the square? That, that's where it all was done. Some of the bits around were on the outside. Because I know you built a set for Tampa oh. TV and Oh, we made all kinds of things. I released them anyway, and they, they didn't sell very well, but we liked it. So did, um, did all this work gain any attention by anyone? I had the Telegraph doing a piece, about half a page, good press. On television, we had BBC Two a reportage. They did a short piece of 10 minutes, and then um, Tony Wilson did his ITV show for them, The Other Side of Midnight, about 15 minutes, a good one. He was introducing our show, what we are about. It was us and the beach, all the rounders. And he said, um, to finish his show, he asked him, Andy Warhol was asked, how did your paintings? And he answered, well, better ask Brenda here. She baits them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what people's general attitude was towards this new project? I think it was too early, two or three years. I just thought it was too much. There wasn't any real income. So you had this massive expenditure of energy. Oh God, yeah. And resource. Yeah, without yeah. Without much coming back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sooner or later, we got Genesis Peorage from Psychic TV. Was involved in um, one of his programs, The God Star. He also had William Burroughs. He sort of engineered it in a way. We thought about music video. He was taking it further. I uh, will detail some of the songs, things they involved in moving on. So is that ultimately why it didn't continue? I think so. I, I think so. It was very good to have done it. We had to do it. It was a different ball game to what we were doing. But we'll go back to that. So you consider it a good experience? Yeah. Or yeah. Normal. Yeah. Yeah. But by but, the end. Yeah, yeah, you had to Step go. Back. Yeah.